طيب الحمد لله نبدأ بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الحمد لله والصلاة والسلام على رسول الله وعلى آله وصحبه ومن اتبع هداه So let's go basically to where we were uh, we last lesson we had covered اسم التفضيل we'd reached these places over here that we were that we had annotated I'll remove those uh, those writings very quickly um select um and then we'll basically start reading so if i could get some of the brothers shall to uh, to volunteer to do some reading and then immediately in actual fact in this very same line that we read last time which was the saying of ali he said bala he responded to ahmed ahmed said alisa kadhalik and he said bala so if i can get someone to read over here please where the arrow is go ahead akhi fayas uh, starting from bala uh, yeah so abu hasan if you can read it, ahmed okay uh, assalamu alaikum wa alaikum assalam wa rahmatullahi ali aliun hey ahmed أحمد هو أحمد هو طويل جدا أليس كذلك علي بلا هو طويل جدا ولكن حامدا أطول منه إنه أطول طالب أطول طالب في فصلنا ومن أطول طالب في فصلكم جيد so just as a uh, just to pick up on this statement over here uh, اسم التفضيل it comes in in two forms they are, they are teaching us in this particular lesson one is when you're comparing two things and then you need harf al jar min atwalu min and then you mention the thing that is being compared to and the other one is it comes as mudaf and mudaf ilayhi it comes as mudaf and mudaf ilayhi and then i gave you some extra rules last time if the mudaf and the lahi has alif or lam if the mudaf and the does not have alif or lam these are the more intricate rules i wanted to just lay down some of the foundations of ism tafdeel which we did last class but we don't necessarily need them in this particular uh, uh, class of ours okay so in actual fact today's lesson here is to introduce lakin lakin Okay. Now let's go to the whiteboard. So, as a reminder, we studied previously in and we said in uh in uh, المدرسة واقف إن المدرسة واقف So what do we say about as a reminder what do we say about this word here المدرسة اسمه إن منصور Anybody اسمه إن منصور نعم نعم أخي اسمه إنا سد. And what do we know about اسمه إنا؟ It's منصوب. It's منصوب. And it's, and the, uh, how do we recognize it being منصوب؟ بالفتحة. Because of the فتحة. So we say uh, المدرسة اسمه إنا منصوب. And then we say وَعَلَامَةُ نَصْبِهِ And the sign of it being mansub is Al-Fatha Al-Fatha Okay Al-Mudarrisa Ismu inna Mansub وَعَلَامَةُ نَصْبِهِ Al-Fatha And 
if you want to go further, you can say al fatha al zahira ala akhirihi or al akhirihi ala akhirihi. The fatha which is clearly seen, because there are some words like mustashfa where the fatha is there but it's not seen. Like for example, al mustashfa. This is called al fatha al muqaddara. In any case, waqifun. Khabar inna khabar Naam. This is Khabaru Inna. Barakallahu Fik. Wa Khabaru Inna ma bihi ma hukmuhu marfu'un. Huwa marfu'un wa alamatu raf'ihi dhammatayn. He said just say ad-dhamma. It's okay, inshallah. Wa alamatu dhammihi wa alamatu raf'ihi ad-dhamma. Jayid? And the, but the reason that the linguists they use this approach is to differentiate between al-alamat al-asliya, the main forms of describing, the main way of recognizing majroor uh, and marfu and mansub, and also the the secondary ways, which is as we showed you before in mudakkar salim, al-muslimuna, the wow. That is the thing that shows that this is marfu'. So to differentiate between the al-alama, al-asliya, and al-alama, al-far'iya, secondary, uh, they say, they just say fatha and dhamma, sufficient. Okay, well, today we have a word which appeared in our reading. It says, lakin. And those of you who are familiar with Urdu, they, re- they know this word because uh, they say Lakin. Lakin. And what does Lakin mean in Urdu, the brothers or who, who speak Urdu? What does it mean? Uh, however. Because, because. However, some say, does it mean because Lakin? Basically, it's it generally the, the main usage it means but. For however, Jayid. And that's actually the same in Arabic over here. But in Arabic, what you have to notice is to, rec- is to emphasize this shadda with a fatha on it. Okay? Now, lakinna, it has the same meaning. It means but or however. Okay? Now, if you go back to your uh, the, the, the dialogue, he said, lakinna uh, hamidan. Lakinna hamidan. What do you say? Atwalu. Is that what you said? Yeah, atwalu minhu. Atwalu minhu. Lakin hamidan. Lakin hamidan. Atwalu minhu. Jayid? So. Let's miss out the alif. What can you notice about the way that this has been written? What is it? What do you notice? What can you? What does it recognize? What do you recognize? Hamid is a Hamid is Hamid is Mansub. Hamid is Mansub. Can you notice anything else? Atwalu. Is نعم خبر منسوب أطول is مرفوع is مرفوع and if you, if you notice this is similar to اسم إنا and خبر إنا okay so two things to mention here number one now this word here, this is called Ismu Lakinna. That's Khabar Lakinna. And what do you think this is called? Khabar Lakinna. Ahsent. Khabar Lakinna. So the fact that this 
original word, which was Mubtada, it became Ismu, ismu Lakinna. And it's also Mansub. And this word here, which used to be the Khabar, it became known as Khabarul Lakinna, and it's also Marfur. It shows that there is a relationship between Inna and Lakinna. In Lakinna. Sahih? Sahih. And today you're going to find another word in Adars al Thalith, which, which has exactly the same pattern. Mm. It has an ism and it has a khabr, and the ism is mansub and the khabr is, mm. is marfu. So linguists, they say all of those words that follow the pattern of inna, we will give them a title. I will say that these are the sisters of Inna. Akhawatu Inna. Okay, so some people say these are called Akhawatu Inna. And some people, they, they, they say it differently, which is, both is okay. They say, uh, they say, Inna wa Inna is from Inna's sisters. It's from the sisters of Inna. It's from the sisters of Inna. Father Akhir Rashid, Rashid, if you need to the mic, in order for uh, Brother Muzammil to know that you have to, if you put your hand up, then the next time, inshallah, he'll give you the mic. And then you can mute it and you can choose to, to add whenever you, whenever, you, whenever you want to. Okay, Akhir, barakallah feek. Akhir Muzammil, if you could just... Yeah. Uh, give Rashid the mic because I don't know because he didn't know that he needed to request it. And that's the reason why you find, he said, let's go now to back to the text. He said over here. Walakinna Hamidan. This is Ismu Lakinna. Attawalu Khabaru Lakinna. Jayid. Tayyid Fadrahi, who was reading Ahmed, it was it was Abu Hassan. Please continue. Ahmed Atwalu Talibin Fi Faslina Ibrahim. Mm. You read it like it's a question. Can you read it again? Atwalu Talib Talib Talibun Fi Fosmina Ibrahim. Why Atwalu Talibun? Can you recognize this word here? Talibun. This one that I just underlined. Okay, Atwalu. Atwalu. Okay. What do we know about Atwalu? Naam? Isma Tafdeel. Isma Tafdeel. So, so we just we said that Isma Tafdeel, either it's going to come with Min after it, or it's going to come as Mudaf. There's two ways. Okay, so it's so this one. Atwalu. Uh, min, min Talibin. Atwalu Minhu. No, but you, I can't see Minhu here. You have to read what's on the paper. Okay. Atwalu Talibin. Ahsant. Barakallah feek. Mudafun wa mudafun ilayhi. So... I'm sorry. Yeah, correct. No, so look, look at the question that Ali said. Wa man... Afwal akhi al-fayyaz. I don't think I'll ask you to, to complete the reading. Qadr, no problem, inshallah. He said, wa man atwalu Talibin. And who is the tallest student in your class? Then you replied, Atwalu Talibin Fi Faslina Ibrahimo. Ibrahimo. Jade. And just as a side point, I think I may have mentioned it before that when you have 
mudaf and mudaf unalayhi, and you have this harful jar going with majroor, these types of combinations, they cannot be, uh, oh, actually, I'm going to hold there because just in case I'm making a mistake. I'll stop. I was going to say that the, the, the order of al mubtada and khabar can change, but I'm not sure this is that example. So let's leave it. Let's leave that uh, philosophy for later. Fadlaki, this is uh, Fayaz. Adaftaruka hadha ya Ahmadu. Inna khattaka jameelu jidda. Ma sha Allah. Jazakallah khairan. And this is a question. Adaftaruka hadha. Ya Ahmadu, adaftaruka hada. Ya Ahmadu, inna khattaka jameelun jiddan. What's the meaning of, of khatt? Handwriting. Hand, handwriting. Jazakallah khairan. Al khatt is handwriting. Khattaka. Why does it say khattaka? Because it is coming as ismu inna, mansoor. Ahsant, khatt. Ta, this is ismu inna. And kaf? Mubni. Mudafun ilayhi. Mabniyun ala al-fatha. Jameelun. Khabru inna marfu'un. Ahsan Allah ilayk. Khabru inna marfu'un. By now, the author of the book is expecting you to know all this. And that's the reason why he didn't put dhammas on the word jameel. He knew that you sh that you that you would know that by now. He expected that you would know that by now, and so he would say, "So you read it as you read it correctly." In khattaka jamilun jiddan, ma sha Allah. Fadlaki, Abu Hassan. Ahmad, shukran ya Aliyu. Khattai jamilun, wa khatta wa khatta khattaq. وخطاكو وخطاكا وخط وخطاكا أجملو جيد. so just have a look over here. you're reading it. look at this word, okay. خطوكا عفوا خطوكا. نعم 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 نعم. as you can see there's a ta and this is the part of the ta. there's no alif. If there was a talif, then there would be a gap in between. Look, I realize you're reading it like this. You're reading it as if there's an alif after the ta. You were saying, but there's no there's no gap. This is directly with the ta and the kaf. So then it's either going to be dhamma or it's going to be kasra, it's going to be fatha. So here, as you said, you said. خطي خطي جميل وخطك أجمل أجمل. Now, just a few minutes ago, I said to you guys that that اسم تفضيل either it's going to have min after it or it's going to be مضاف. So which of the two is this? There's nothing after Ajmalu. Zakriya, Mabni, you're asking the question, what is Mabni? Mabni is the opposite of Mu'rab. And Mu'rab means that you that the end Dhamma, Fatha or Kasra, it can change. Sometimes it can be Dhamma, sometimes it can be Fatha, depending on the situation. But Mabni means that it's not going to change because that's how that letter is always that word is always pronounced for example hadha the word hadha is never going to become hadhu or hadhi unless it's a different word altogether so mabni means fixed just like look at Ahmed the short answer is mabni means fixed <laughs> sometimes you think go the long way around and just, just other people thinking straight Alhamdulillah. The answer for Mabni, what's the meaning of Mabni? The Mabni meaning is fixed. Here, Ajmalu, Barakallah fiqh Zakariya. Ajmalu, Naam, so why why is it there's nothing mentioned over here? And the, the answer basically 
is that it is assumed or it's understood. It's already assumed and it's already understood that it means min khattika or min khatti. Khattuka ajmalu and he means min khatti. Yeah, and that's the same as, uh, you know, Mubtada and Khabar. If I said to you, uh, fi yadika? If I said to you, Mada fi yadika? What's in your hand? If you said, Qalamun, I'm not going to say to you, La, this is the Mubtada, where's the Khabar? Because the Khabar is already in, in the question, it's already in, in our minds, which is, Qalamun fi yadi. You get it? So it doesn't have to repeat it again because it's already understood and known. And this is how Arabic language works. Even other languages, they work the same. I had a quick question. Why does this word over here have a kasra on it? Even though there's no harful jar. Because of the yeah. Yeah. Um, because there's a ya. And the ya, what's the ya doing? What the, what the ya is forcing the kasra. So this word should be khattu. But when the when this khattu was mudaf, and the mudaf and ulayhi was a ya, that this ya is very strong. There's no way you're going to be able to say khattu yi. So in order to get the pronunciation sound and 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 easy, the kasra is directly is automatically formed, and you say khatti. So don't say uh, you know don't be confused that this is still mubtada. This is still mubtada, and it's still marfu. Okay. Is it, is it okay to say this is not due to some grammatical uh, reason, but only due to some linguistic or spelling reason only? Yeah, it's not, that, that's, that's what it is. That's what it is. That's, that's the difference. Not, there's no uh, grammatical reason to change it, but it's, the, it's more pronunciation. This is more semantics. Now, Walikum Salam Rahmatullah Raj. And I could have mentioned that, that this is Mankus. I'm not sure if this is an example of Mankus, to be honest. Uh, and Allah knows best. You can correct me if I'm wrong. No problem, inshallah. So uh, semantics, basically, uh, you know, pronoun pronunciation of the word. That's what I meant, maybe, if I've got the wrong word, right word or not. Ah, so the good question over here. Someone asks, what is the... Um, the Arab of Khatti. Well, he's starting a new sentence. He said, Khatti Jamilun. So this is Mubtada. And the hukum of Mubtada is? Marfu'. Is Marfu'. Wa alamatu Raf'ihi. The sign of it being Marfu' is, as you know, is the Dhamma. But is it, can you see it? No, Mustafa. No. So basically it's, this is the reason why I, when I spoke earlier, I said sometimes they say this is, uh, you know, a, a clear visual um, presence of the, the Dhamma at the end of the word. The reason they say that is because in this situation here, there's a dhamma there, but you can't see it because you're forced to pronounce it as a kasra. So it's called dhammatun, it's the assumed dhamma. It's in Arabic, you call it, as Akram mentioned, dhamma muqaddara. Dhammatun muqaddaratun. Dhammatun muqaddaratun. Wa alamat rafihi. Dhammatun muqaddaratun fi akhirihi. Jayid. Fadl akhi, let's, because of the ya, which is the ya al-mutakallim ahsent. Can we get two new microphones uh, to read? 
the next couple of lines. So, Fadl Akhi Ahmed and Rashid. Ahmed, if you could read Ali and Rashid, you could read the next one, which is Ahmed. Okay. Man hadal, man hadal fatal ladi ma'aka ya Ahmed, ka annahu akhuka. Naam, huwa akhi, huwa akhi shaqiqu. Barakallahu feek. Tayyib, ahsent. Tayyib, stop there for a second, please. Um, so here we have Ka'annahu Akhuka Ka'annahu Akhuka And what I'm going to tell you is I'll just tell you something very simple Ka'anna is the rule Min Akhawati Inna 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 Ka'anna Min akhawati inna Right? So, what do you know about this ha, which is attached to ka'anna? Ismu ka'anna. It is? Ismu ka'anna mansoob. Ismu ka'anna. Barakallahu feek. Ismu ka'anna. Wa ma hukmu dhalika? Mansoob. Mansoob. Jayid, barakallahu feek. Huwa, wa lakinnahu, so in actual fact, you will say this is ismu ka'anna fi ismu ka'anna, how are you going to say ismu ka'anna? This is mabni yun al-dhamma. Ismu ka'anna mansub wa huwa mabni yun al-dhamma. Ismu ka'anna mansub wa huwa mabni yun Al-Dhamma. So where is the khabaru ka'anna? Akhuk. Ayyuh. Akhuk. Akhuk. And this is a small indication that Akhu, the alamatu, this is marfu, and the wow is the sign of it being marfu, and you'll get more information on that later on, insha'Allah. And then Rashid, he read this line for us. He said, Huwa akhi ash Nam, and it's, it's well known that you have uh, uh, brothers and sisters. Sometimes their mother and father, they're the same. This is like our, you know, most case, you might say scenario. That our brothers, our siblings, we are all in the same house, same mom and dad. But sometimes uh, my sister or my brother, uh, we have the same father, but our mothers are different. And th this in Arabic, this is called Akhun Li Um. Afwan, Akhun Li Ab. If our fathers are the same and our mothers are different, we have the same father but different mother. But if we have the same mother by a different father in, in Islam, and in Arabic, this is called Akhun Li Um. And also Ukhtun Li Um, same. Akhun Li Um, Ukhtun Li Um. Akhun Li Ab, Ukhtun Li Ab. So this is in English what you call half brother or half sister. But then someone who is a full brother, this is called Al Akh, Akhun. Shaqiq, Akhun Shaqiq. That's a full brother or a full sister. Okay? So the meaning of Akhi Ash Shaqiq is he is my full brother. Question from book one Why does Ash Shaqiq have Alif or Lam? Because it's definite. Naam Akhi? Because it's my 
Because it's? Marifa. Marifa. Okay. We know it's Marifa. Because it's Kuali for Lam. It is appearing as. So uh, the question I'm asking is what's the reason why it has Ali for Lam? Harf Shamsi? Somebody said it's Badal. Someone said it's Harf Shamsi. Harf Shamsi, Akhir Kareem, that will only give us the pronunciation. He'll say, Ash Shakiq. But why didn't he say, Akhi Shakiq? Why didn't he say, Akhi Ash Shakiq? Please give uh, Zakaria the mic. I think he's got his hand up for that reason. Unless it was there before. No, you have the mic already, Zakaria. Na'at wa man'ud. Jayid, na'at wa man'ud. Na'at wa man'ud. More than one person is saying that. Ahsantu. So, why? You know that the na'at follows the man'ud. So, why does it have alif wa lam? Because uh, man'ud is uh, uh, ma'rifat. Ma because ma'ruf, the, the man'ud is akh. And you said it's Ma'rifa, but there's no Alif or Lam, so how do you know it's Ma'rifa? Because it's Mudafa. Ayyuh. Barakallahu feek, Akhi Habib. Because it is Mudaf, and it's Mudaf to this Ya. That makes it Mudaf, that makes it Ma'rifa. It makes it Ma'rifa. So the, 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 uh, Al Man'ud is Ma'rifa. Because it's mudaf. So the na'at also has to be ma'rifa. And it needs alif or lam if it wants to do its job by describing akh. Is that clear, inshallah? Yes. Uh, let's just quickly read so that we didn't miss anything. Keep going, please. أكبر منك هو أم أصغر. جيد. And this is a revision because in the درس الأول you had أم in a question. فضل أخي رشيد. هو أصغر مني. بارك الله فيك. فضل. في أي مهجين أنت يا أخي؟ This interesting word مهجع. Basically, it refers to uh, dorms. You know, when uh, for the people, for the youngsters that might not know, dorms in a university campus, they have places where students can reside. Those who come from far away, and in Arabic, that is called al mahjau. Al mahjau. So, what's the what building are you in? He's asking him, what building are you in, ya akhi? Fi ayi. Mahja'in anta ya akhi. I think we had this word ayyu in book one. It's mudaf and it means which? Hostel. Could be hostel. Akram naam. Ahsant. But basically, yeah. Go ahead. Ana fil muhja'il khamisi wa huwa ba'idun jiddan anil madrasati. Anil jami'ati do you have a madrasati? I go madrasati here. Ah, interesting. Let's see who has the updated book. And then, so Anna Phil, you, you said Muhaja, but it's actually Mahja. Anna Phil Mahja il Khamisi. Jayid, Father Rahi Ahmed. Yeah, go Mahja here. Jayid, Father Rahi Ahmed. Anna Phil Mahja is Samini, Wahua Abadumin Mahjaikum. Abadumin Mahjaikum. Barakallah Fik. Father, you know the min mahjaikum. The min is a no. Jaro is the no jaro majroor in the mahja. Yeah, where is it now? Where is it? Where is it? Min mahjaikum. That's that's harf al jar. Oh. And this is majroor. And this is mudaf. And this is mudaf in the lehi. Yeah. Is it clear? جيد فضل أخي أيهما أحسن آه أيهما this should be easy for you guys now because in book one you studied uh, أيو which means which 
and it's always going to be mudaf. mudaf and now mudaf. you have this yeah, damir of huma, and huma refers to two things. You did huwa, you did hiya, you did uh, hum, you did hunna, and now if you didn't do it before, you have huma. And huma refers to these two things. Which two things is he asking about? Yes, asking about the uh, muhjaim. Al mahjaul khamis wa al thamin. Al thamin. Al mahjaul khamis wa al mahjaul thamin. So he said, "Ayyuhuma ahsanu? Which of them two is uh, best? That is better." Taib. Then he said, "Al mahjaul khamis ahsanu, fa inna hurufahu aw." Why Khamisi? Because um, there's... Oh, Afwan. It's Al-Mahja'ul Khamisu. Ahsant. Al-Mahja'ul Khamisu ahsanu fa inna ghurufahu awsa'u wa nawafidahu akbaru wa marawafidahu akbaru. Afwan, Afwan, Afwan. Slow down, please, Ahmed. Fa inna... ghurufahu awsa'u. Ah, ghuru... ghurafa... Who Ghurafa this is Jam Ghurafon Jayid Ghurafon Fa inna Ghurafa Hu Awsa'u This is again Ismu inna Mansub You can see the Fatha there And Khabru inna is Awsa' Which is Marfu' You can see the Dhamma there Fadda Wa nawafidahu akbaru why does this one? Why does Nawafid have Fatha on it? Who's following, mashallah? This wow is wow al at. And therefore, it takes the same ruling as Ghuraf, as Ismu Inna. So you say Nawafida Ma'tufun. Ma'tufun. Allah. Ghuraf, meaning it follows suit. Now, uh, now I don't have a lot of keep going. Oh, from there, I'm going to go to the other side. I'm going to go to uh, I think you're going to say وَالسُّرَ رَلَّتِي uh, which is going to, also going to be مَعْتُوف وَالسُّرَ رَلَّتِي فِيهِ أَجْمَلُ مَرَحِيد is the plural of from book one مِرْحَاو مِرْحَاو which basically means toilet so that's why al uh, Mahj al-Khamis is better. Now, three things. Let's quickly track them in the exercises. Exercise number Tamreen Rakam Sitta. He says, Ikra al Mithalain, Thum Marbut Baina Kulli Jumlataini, Fima Yali Mustamilan, La Kinna Wa'lam, Anna La Kinna. Min akhawati inna. Join these two sentences using lakinna. Knowing that lakinna is from the akhawat of inna. At-tullabu kathirun. Al-faslu saghirun. At-tullabu kathirun. Lakinna al-fasla saghirun. Let me ask someone who hasn't read Ayman, please, Abu Hamza, if you could read this for me. Hamidun, Hamidun, Mustahidun, Lakinna, Sadi, Kahu, Kaslanu. So you could have read this one first for me, which is Hamidun, Mustahidun, Sadi, Kahu, Kaslanu. And join it together with Lakinna. You say Hamidun, Mustahidun, Lakinna, Sadi, Kahu, Kaslanu. And kaslanu, this is mamnu' min as sarf. What will you say, Ayman, for number one? 
محمد محمد طويل لكن حامدا قصير لكن حامدا حسنا لكن حامدا قصير طيب uh, let's go for someone else to read اخي هنيف Number two, can you do it for us? Oh, I don't really want to. <laughs> no problem. My you want to force, Akhi, Imran? Naam? I said my reading is not very good. No, but Akhi, you can always try, inshallah. And learn from, we can learn from your mistakes. Okay, uh, which, which one are we on? Number two? Yeah, yeah. Um, let's get my book out because I can't really read it properly. Uh... Aminatu Mujtahidu Mujtahidatun Mujtahidatun Lakinna Lakinna Uchtuha Uchtiha Why Uchtiha? You said Uchtuha and you said Uchtiha Why not Uchtaha? Uh, okay, Uchtaha. <laughs> Why? Uchtaha, um, I don't know. It goes after Lakinna. Sorry, yeah, okay. Because it came di directly after yeah. Lakinna. And after Lakinna, it's going to be Ismu Lakinna. And Ismu Lakinna is. Mansub is mulakinna is mansub and mansub means a fatha. I said, Okay, Hanif, Zakhlo Kiran, Lakinna Uchtaha Kasla Kasla, my brothers and sisters, this is the Mu'annath of Kaslanu. Now, this is the Mu'annath of Kaslanu and as you can see, it has this alif maksur on, maksur on the end. So you just read it like an alif. And this is another example of khabaru lakinna marfu' bidammatin muqaddratin. Jayid, I think we can uh, close the lesson and we can say the rest of those uh, few examples uh, can be done for homework, inshallah, uh, as well as we take. I want to take one or two examples from from number seven. Ah, oh, actually, we've got two or three things to do very quickly. Uh, so we have the exercise on ka'anna, and I, I, I didn't. We explained the grammatical ruling of ka'anna, ka'anna, but we didn't speak about the meaning. And ka'anna means it, it is as if, or he resembles. It looks like he is. Okay, so basically this is to show resemblance. Man hadha al-fata ka'annahu akhuka. Who is this young boy? It seems as if he is your brother. It seems as if he is your brother. Ka'annahu akhuka. Let me go to... Al Al Maani Al Maani dot com was it dot net dot com can you mother Quran? Then over Let's here, here you are. Then over here, you're right. Ka'anna. Ka'anna. And then do search. And you will see. Can you see that on your screens? No, sir. Oh, this is not coming on your screen. We see Google page only. Ah. 
Uh, no? No, it's okay. Yeah. So I typed in Ka'anna and look at the different searches that we got. And some of the examples I want to show you is. Uh, no, it only gave me for Ka'anna. I want it to give me for Ka'anna. I'm not sure if it's going to give me that now. Hopefully. So it's on the other file that I haven't uh, I didn't transfer. Jayid, go back to where we were. Previous tab. So here, ka'anna, it means resembles your brother. It resembles. Ka'annahu. Man hadihi tiflatu ka'annaha ukhtuka. So what would be for number one? Ka'annahu zamiluka. Ka'annahu zamiluka. Okay, if you can think about these, very similar to the first das we did with inna and the dhamair. Okay. And here we have, uh, we finished the exercise with the numbers. We have this, uh, this is important because you were just introduced to al-mahja'ul khamisu, al-mahja'ul thaminu. This in English is known as uh, ordinal numbers. You know, when when the people are, for example, in a race, and they say this one came first, that one came second. This is similar. And the ruling of ordinal numbers, al-awwal, al-thani, al-thalith, al-rabi', you should remember that, two things. Well, quite quite simply, just remember that the ordinal numbers, al-adad, al-tartibi, is, is na'at and man'ut. Na'at and man'ut. The adad is na'at. The adad is na'at. So, for example, ad darsu As you can see, it has a dhamma. As you can see, it's mudakkar. There's no tabma bota. And it has alif ulam. So, as-sadisu, it has alif ulam. And it has dhamma. And it's not tabma bota. If it was Mu'annath, you would say simply Ad Tamar Buta, As Sadisatu. Jayat? If, if we are using it, for example, with As Sadu Sadisatu. Barakallah Fiqh. So if, if the example, for example, if, if for example we have Mu'annath, As Sadu. What time is it? As-sa'atu As-sa'atu Seven o'clock As-sa'atu As-sa'atu Sorry about the scene As-sa'atu As-sa'atu Because this has got Tamar Bota This also got Tamar Bota on it Order on it Somebody has a question? How about for the number two? There you are Number two Athani and Athania. Athaniatu. The question that you really should ask is this one here. Is Al Awal. The Mu'annath of Awal is not Al Awalatu, is Al Ula. You say At Talib Al Awalu. At Talibatu Al Ula. Jayid? Now, uh, for you, those of you who are, who are familiar with the Islamic months, this should trigger something in your mind. Al awwal and al ula. Anyone? Dumad al ula. Ahsant. When you say rabi', you say rabi' al awwal. When you come to Jumada, you say 
Jumada? Al Ula. Now you know that Rabi' is Mudakkar and Jumada is Mu'annath. Barakallahu feekum. And that is basically what I would like you to do. I'm hoping, inshallah, uh, that's fine. I'll ask you to do homework. Inshallah, Adars, al Tamreen Al Hadi Ashar is homework. And the deadline is, is uh, no deadline really, it's a few days you have. Because we're still trying to figure out how to mark the previous ones. So you still have today, tomorrow, and then Saturday is going to be off, inshallah, anyway. So this is, this, you can do this by Saturday. Homework is a tamreen al sabi' and also where is lakinna this one a tamreen al sadis al sadis al sabi' wal hadi ashar wal hadi ashar وجزاكم الله خيرا والله اعلم وصلى الله وسلم على نبينا محمد وعلى اله وصحبه وسلم السلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته وعليكم السلام ورحمة الله وبركاته ما شاء الله زكريا well done for paying attention and learning with us أحسن الله إليك وإلى والديك so still the uh, just to uh, confirm so it's exercise six seven and eleven right Okay, and, and this is the last lesson for lesson three, and uh, that's correct? Yeah, that's, that's right. I think we, we, we ended up rushing it in the end, but we covered most of the things. Al-Kalimatul Jadida, generally speaking, the brothers and sisters, they should just go to these words and uh, do their best to understand them, inshallah, to learn, learn the new vocabulary, write them down, I don't personally recommend translating words, you know, uh -huh. uh, but everyone has a different way of doing it. But personally, you know, I, I like to think about the word and imagine the meaning and picture it in my mind. And that way, when you need to use the word, you don't have to go through another language to get to the word that you need. Yeah. Mashallah. So uh, this is a question that also came earlier, possibly in... Uh, email or another note um yep yeah that's right uh, so i i just thought it'll be uh it'll be good if we can maybe just shed some light um, no. <clears throat> um i uh i will i'll let you say first and then i'll say what i need to do you know I, I i think the issue of um learning new vocabulary and recording them is very individual you know everyone has their own style of doing it their own style of learning Mm -hmm. um, some they prefer lists, some they, uh, you know, they make charts and tables, is, is varied. And uh, personally, I was just very old school, conventional style. You know, I used to make, for example, lists of words I didn't understand, new words, uh, and, and write them down in one place. But uh, go ahead, I can share your experience and share your method. Please do that. Yeah. Um, so I, uh, what I tend to do, I mean, even though I, I need to maybe, you know, follow it more consistently, but uh, the, the approach which I like is we, we take the word, we, uh, for each word, we do four things. One is we, we, we should know what the singular is. Uh, the, the, you know, the, muzak, the, sorry, the singular form of the word. We should know Mufrat. what, what uh, Mufrad, Afwan, yes, Mufrad. We should know what the jam is for what that the word. Jam is for and then we should know the opposite of that word. So, you know, whatever that word is, if there is an opposite for it. And the last thing, last thing is, you know, to create a simple sentence, which you can remember either that or, uh, uh, you know, reference a Quranic verse, which uses that word so that you, you're able to re remember the context of that word. Mm. MashaAllah. Good. Good. Yeah. Good. And uh, can you recommend any websites for listening practice that are easy to follow for beginners to Arabic, something that is not too fast paced and complex, children's stories or the like? That's, that was the question that came also in the thing. Do you have anything for that? Um, <clears throat> not at the moment, but I, uh, uh, yeah, not at the moment. I'm not, I'm not. I, I mean, have what, what, yeah. what I usually say is 
to for the beginners, uh, the, right at the beginning, uh, I'll just say, you know, read the Quran with more added contemplation, added concentration, and trying to, you know, recognize the words that you're learning and seeing the patterns. And again, everyone has a different um, a style of learning and different level of absorption, and also a different level of, of, uh, of, of developing the language in their mind, logically. Some people, they, pref they, they, they learn to read very quickly and they can't speak, but others, you know, just in my own experience, I remember there was two people side by side. After two years, one was a, you know, a fluent reader. If you spoke to him, you'd think this person only started learning Arabic that same day. But when it came to reading, he was ahead of everybody else who's reading books in volumes. Mm -hmm. And then there was another person who was, if you spoke to him, you'd think this person is, you know, he's been living in those countries and speaking Arabic for a very long time. But if you asked him to read a book, he would read it, but not be able to comprehend what he's reading. Mm. You know, so these skills, so the same will be, I think, for listening. I say at the beginning, do whatever you can, understand the Quran, read the uh, Quran, read the, the, um, uh, the, the Quran with concentration contemplation, trying to recognize the words that you learned already, the vocabulary and the rules in book one and book two, investigate, ask yourself, why is this a kasra? Why is this a dhamma? Go to the tafsir if you can. In any <coughs> case, when you come to approximately this stage where we are or a little bit further, let's say midway through book two, uh, I would recommend listening to the ulama who speak very slowly. And two of the ulama who speak very slowly and clearly Sheikh Salah al Fawzan and Sheikh Ubaid al Jabri. Uh, Allah. So, if you could get their lessons, which are the basic lessons, so you could benefit from, for example, Al Usul al Thalatha. Uh, you know, Sheikh Ubaid al Jabri, I remember when we used to translate for him years ago, uh, he, he, he speaks so clearly and slowly that before he produces a second sentence, the translator could squeeze in the translation in between without the sheikh's thought pattern being disturbed because that's his pace. Wow. Inshallah. Yeah. So it's very slow, very clear, very uh, structured way of speaking. You know? And uh, Muzammil, you attend many of Sheikh Salah Hosan's rules. Well, what would you comment about the speed of his, his, his delivery and speech? Yeah, I think I think that is one one very big benefit of uh, listening to him is that he uses very simple words, uh, you know, in his uh, in his lectures. Uh, they are not complex at all. Um, you know, obviously sometimes depending on your vocabulary, uh, uh, you know, depth, you may you may maybe miss some of the words, uh, and you know you might have to just quickly refer to it. And also because he's slow in his uh, lectures. Uh, you can always take a note of the words, you know, which you have not picked up and, you know, then references later. Uh, but I would, I would highly recommend, uh, you know, brothers and sisters who have finished book one, that, you know, you can very easily follow his lessons. Um, and I think I shared it at the beginning of the class, uh, you know, the, the website where, you know, you can take that as a starting point, potentially and you know look at the the different books he's going through and you know easily follow the yes. you know the sections which he's going through very good very good yeah much sure. uh, i'll put the link directly for the sheikh's website but also the website that you have over there uh sheikh fozan dot uh bangalore that will also give people Uh, yeah, uh, another side benefit, inshallah, um, that we will advise as well, barakallahu fikum, um, was that we should try and just uh, try to abandon anything to do with English uh, any books for now, especially for those who are able to read and at least understand something, who are able to finish with book one. Because when the advice we were given then, 
um, was that uh, we should start reading like the basic book that you've, like you've mentioned, sort of Salatha, all those basic books. And uh, in my own uh, 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 experience, that when I start buying Arabic books, alhamdulillah, because uh, there are some ways that have been used there as well that you might not even come across them while you're learning. And that makes you get more familiar and makes you more confident. So if you're scared in buying Arabic books, and that might really affect your learning uh, as well. And another thing is in terms of uh, memorizing words, of, uh, especially Kalimat al Jadid, one of the ways that we were uh, told then also, another good way is you have your one personal book where any word you hear on that day, maybe you're, you're going somewhere, you saw something on the wall, or you read something in a book, or someone says something, all you need to do, go home, write it down in that, your main book. So from that main book, every day you have five words that you memorize, every day. So now, when you're writing it down in your main book, you have it in your head. When you're writing it out again into your little small book, maybe like a little paper, five words that you want to learn for that day. And after that, if you for that five words, you can place it somewhere, maybe near your bed or near your reading table, something like that. Or as we are passing by, you can still see that word. And that really ups a lot. And inshallah, it does another uh, benefit for, uh, for us, the, the beginners, inshallah, which I Asha. believe really, really helps. Barakallahu fikrin, Jazakallahu khairan. Jazakallahu khairan. Tayyib, I'll take permission to leave. And uh, Allah Ta'ala bless uh, you all, bless your time and bless your learning and keep us sincere upon a path that uh, uh, is pleasing to Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala. Keep us firm upon that path. Amen. Okay, mashallah. Um, Jazakallahu khairan, dear brothers and sisters, for joining the class. Um, uh, for those of you who are still here, uh, I'm just going to quickly share one, one sheet which I am working on with our Ustad. Um, so this is basically for, uh, you know, uh, some daily activities which, uh, which we can, uh, you know, work on, uh, given that many of us are working from, uh, you know, basically at home and, uh, uh, you know, and there can be quite a lot of, uh, distractions at times so so i'm just yeah um, this is something which I'm, I'm working on so i'm we are going to share this inshallah with all of you uh well in our telegram groups and other places so different types of activities around diet exercise islamic learning your family you know all the different things which you can do uh, your career related stuff you know some aspects of charity etc so, uh, so this is a work in progress and inshallah, once it is complete, we will share it with all of you and, you know, we hope that it is going to be of uh, benefit. to ask can anyone join these lessons without having covered book one totally uh, i think i think yes you can brother miraj uh, you know even if you have not covered it uh, fully you can still benefit from it um because you know the way ustad teaches is uh, you know he uses a very simple methodology he tends to revise the concepts uh, often uh, and uh, you know there is a lot of revision which he goes through. So I think I would I would surely recommend. Obviously, if you have not done book one at all, you know then it may not be suitable. But at least if you have finished maybe half of book one, uh, you know, and uh, I, I I would say that you know you can still benefit. People can still benefit. Inshallah. Yesterday we couldn't have a class, so you know it had to be cancelled. 
Um, so we will have a class, inshallah, tomorrow, which is Friday, same time. Uh, and then on Saturday, uh, there will be a, uh, you know, it will be book one session. So, you know, just the brothers who catch up with each other and, you know, who do the revision. So on Saturday, we will have that. Uh, for all and we will share the recording soon and yes yes, yes just one Long some uh, request if, if possible now we can we have like uh, 10 minutes after the start of class uh, your book one reading because it's really useful uh, if, if possible yeah. Yes, uh, yes, not a problem, uh, Habib. We can we can surely do that, um, and uh, you know we can make it optional. So those who who would want to attend, they can attend, and you know those who want to drop, they can drop off. And what we can do, Habib, is uh, we can take a short break. So once the class happens, maybe we can just take a quick five minute break, uh, you know, five or ten minute break, just to refresh. And then we can come back and do the book one reading for maybe 20, 25 minutes or something. So, yeah, that's a good idea. That's a very good idea, actually. Mm -hmm. Yeah, So tomorrow when we when I do the advertisement, I will make sure that I mention this point so that uh, the students are, you know, prepared for it, inshallah. And I will speak to you all tomorrow. I'll see you all tomorrow, inshallah. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Wa alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh.